Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to our worship uh, this Sunday. It's really good to be uh, joined by Marilyn and Alan from just up the road. Good to have you with us. Going to take part in the service and uh, good to be joined by Yule, who's a bit further down the road in a beautiful part of Yorkshire. Uh, so great. Thank you, Yule, for uh, troubling uh, to join us and being our preacher today. Um, th there's a lot. There's a lot going on, and uh, um, in our minds, in our prayers, are uh, um, everyone who has, um, well, uh, been caught up with GCSEs or A levels, uh, and all the uncertainty uh, and turmoil that's been caused. Uh, by uh, the results process. I, I, I hope now um, things are becoming clearer for everyone and everyone's able to progress to the next thing they want to progress to in a, in, in a clear um, and stable way. And today we join together uh, to worship Jesus. So, um, our introduction. We, we remember that we come and meet with uh, our Lord in this time which he has given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. In it. Now, uh, we're going to sing our first song. It's, let me just, let me just admit someone who's coming in on the phone. Welcome to you, uh, whoever you are. Um, welcome. Right, so now we're going to continue by singing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your
strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy Brilliant. So I'll collect. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that presents, prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Next month, we are um, we'll be planning to hold an Alpha course. Uh, the, the Alpha course is a great way to uh, learn about the Christian faith, either to learn it for the first time or to deepen uh, the faith that's been part of all your life. Now, Elaine Hainsworth is going to be interviewing Gemma Escrete, uh, uh, going to be sharing her experience of being on the Alpha course. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be interviewing Gemma um, regarding Alpha. Gemma and I first met on the Alpha course about 18 months ago. Gemma has always attended St. James's Church and um, sings in the choir. So welcome Gemma and thank you for agreeing to talk to us. Um, what made you decide to go on the Alpha course? Um, well, at the time, um, one of my friends had just completed an Alpha course in Bath where she went to university. Um, one of her friends was actually leading it. So, um, she kind of just mentioned to me that she got a lot out of it. So that made me start to think about it a bit more because I'd always heard about the Alpha course in notices at church, um, but never really acted on um, those initial thoughts. So that's what kind of started the process off. Um, then I started to think it'd be quite nice to connect with people from church who I don't usually talk to as much because I was used to um you know speaking more to people from choir or who I knew from Sunday school when I was younger um so I thought that would be quite a nice opportunity um I think at the time I was struggling a bit more um with things at work so I thought it'd be quite nice to just dedicate some time in my evenings to um you know be surrounded by 
um, welcoming, caring people from church, have time to reflect on my thoughts and beliefs and, um, you know, just um, do something a bit different. So, yeah, good. Um, and what did you gain from Alpha, Gemma? Um, so I definitely feel that it strengthened my faith and um, gave me a, a deeper understanding. Um, I did RS as a GCSE. Um, I've, as I say, I've been to church a lot over my life, but I suppose this just dedicates a bit more time to really go over the teachings. And, and I think from Alpha, um, one of the best things I found was it's really great at applying things to day-to-day -day modern life. Um, which I don't think I'd kind of really thought about as much before. So, um, yeah, and I thought it was really nice having different perspectives from um, other people there because everyone's so different. Um, and that was a really good learning point as well. Good. Um, what would you say to anyone who was maybe considering it, but not really sure whether they should do Alpha or not? Um, what, what would you give them any encouragement? Yeah. Um, so I suppose just remembering that everyone else is in the same boat and I felt a bit anxious about going and that's quite normal to feel a bit, you know, oh, do I go and do something that's completely new with people I don't know and that's, that is quite anxiety provoking but um, I gained a lot out of it and I'm sure um, a lot of other people did. Um, you've really got nothing to lose. And as I say, you know, everyone's so welcoming and caring that, um, you know, it's a really lovely experience. So I'd definitely say to go for it. Thank you, Gemma. That was great. And thank you for sharing. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Elaine. And thank you, Gemma. And uh, you heard what she said. Go for it. Um, if, if you're thinking about it and, and it does take a bit of courage to take the step and I'll give it a go, well, please give it a go. We'd love to see you. Um, now, um, Marilyn is kindly going to read our lesson for us. Thank you, Mar Marilyn. I'll just, you, I'll just unmute you. There. Thank you, Marilyn. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, beginning to read at verse 13. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, now, uh, Yule, um, uh, if you could unmute yourself, that'd be great. And um, look forward to what you're going to share with us. Thank you. Good morning. Um, nicknames. Yes, I've had a few. 
some of them not very nice, but two that lasted a long time. One was in primary school and I was named after Yodel, which was at the time a, a chocolate spread much advertised on the new ITV channel. Those of us with hair my color will may well remember it. But the most lasting one was when I went to secondary school, I was nicknamed Christmas, Christmas Kennedy. For obviously a pun on my name, Yule, U-E-L-L, -L, sounds like Y-U-L-E, quite clear, easy to get. And I was you know, I was Christmas for a long time. And uh, I was very fortunate there were many worse nicknames than that. <laughs> In our gospel, of course, Jesus gives Simon Bar Jonas, Simon, son of Jonah, a nickname. Jesus gives him, as we all know, the name Petros which we translate as the name Peter, which is you know, from the Greek, a word for a stone, uh, a loose stone. However, I, I worry about that. I think it would, if it was modern English, we would probably have named them Rocky, translate them as Rocky. It sounds much better, doesn't it? And uh, wouldn't it sound great in a heavenly boxing bout, you know? In the blue corner, the fighter for the face, Rocky Bar Jonah. Maybe not, but you know what I mean, a bit fanciful that, but uh, uh, a nickname nonetheless, Rocky sounds much more strong, but unlike the nicknames I had, this one is an earned nickname, really earned, because Jesus calls Simon Petros, which in Greek is a, a noun for a stone, a masculine word, and in the same sentence uses the word Petra, a feminine noun meaning a bedrock, a cliff, a jutting stone. So something here about strength and dependability. Wonderful nickname. And he gives them the nickname. Why? Well, because he answers that extraordinary question. Who do, and I would say ordinary people say, not the Roman leaders, not the Jewish leaders, but who do ordinary people say that I am? And he gives the Give, he gives them some answers, but then Simon Bar Jonah answers brilliantly You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus immediately recognizes that this, of course, did not come from human. This is a revelation to Peter from God. Uh, and uh, what it means, of course, is that uh, the, the, the name about building the church, we can get really hung up on this, but uh, I don't think it was built on Petros. I think it was built on what Peter said, uh, that you are the Messiah. The church is built on faith. We know that. But of course it's built on faith. Remember Thomas in the locked room, doubting Thomas, as we call him, sadly. Um, he went on to do wonderful things afterwards. Uh, he only believes once he's seen the hands and touched the side. But Jesus says to him, doesn't he? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. And of course, that is us today. Peter's confession, as the church calls it, uh, is deeply subversive. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into detail, but the gates of Hades will open, will open while they prevail. The gates of heaven are broken and unlocked. It's wonderful. And where does all this happen? Hmm. A very unlikely place, Caesarea Philippi. And it's worth taking a little sideline here just to understand how important the relevance of Molly's statement is in such a place. It was a town considered by the Jews to be blasphemous, idolatrous, a horror, headquarters of foreign rulers, a absolute symbol of oppression. And the town was named Caesar, who was patron to that not very nice man, Herod the Great's, not very nice son by Herod the Great's fourth of 10 wives called Philip, where the Philippi comes from. This couldn't get worse background here, could it? And uh, it was an area where only Caesar worship was supposed to take place. Uh, on the, in the temple in Caesarea Philippi, we're told that it said that Caesar is saviour and Caesar is son of God. Absolutely blasphemous. It couldn't be worse. 
And even before it was called Caesarea Philippi, it was called Panias after the god Pan. Uh, one of his many things was to be a god of uh, remote places. And this is one of, or was a considered a remote place. It was a cave where one of the sources of the Jordan comes out, still does, of course. So when this, you couldn't have picked a more unholy place as you could get for this incredibly holy, earth-shattering, nickname-giving event. So when Peter declares, you are the Messiah, the living Son of God, it is in its own way incredibly revolutionary, not in a violent way, a non-violent way only, not a Messiah in a shining knight in armor to get rid of these terrible Romans, but a Messiah who changes the world by changing one person at a time and still does, where we wouldn't be here or seeking to be here. And from here on, as you know, if you know the story of Jesus, most of his, his ministry is now complete. It's the ministry life for the months just to walk to Jerusalem and to the cross. Now, there's a lot in this passage, and it's very tempting to go overboard. I'm going to, it's going to pick two things for you to think about and pray about over the coming weeks. Caesarea Philippi was and re totally representative of oppression at the time. So how do we stand against oppression? Never an easy thing. And down to our own consciences after much prayer. I mean, what do you do when you see or hear about clear misuses of power? Anything? Nothing? I mean, one of the things I do is write to my MP, and, uh, Nigel Adams, I'm in a different constituency from most of you. Uh, he must have my name off pat, off pat I'll tell you. <laughs> Join activist organizations, I've done that, although I'm not much of an activist really. I boycott certain products, I try and buy deliberately others and so on. But what do you do? And in many of our books in the Bible, both the Hebrew part and the Greek part, Old and New Testaments, they have the concept of building and stones in building church. In Greek, ecclesia, a meeting, a, a gathering, an assembly, and a, a sense of just gathering. So how do we define church now? This has come much to the fore in the pandemic, with buildings closed by and large. Uh, and, but it has a really good upside, a really good upside. And that is, it's easier to invite people to worship. I mean, just think about taking people to church for the first time. They're going into a strange building. They have to learn when to stand, when to sit, when to kneel, when to get the mint imperials out when the half hour sermon starts. You don't have any of that to learn. It's a very soft way into faith is through a computer. And I've recommended it to many people of my friends who are not Christian, just to go onto YouTube or onto Facebook and key in service. And you get such a plethora of wonderful wide range of worship. It's never been easier. And as you know, I'm quite peripatetic. I do a lot in Ripon Deanery and Harrogate Deanery. And I help out in the Methodist circuit as well. And many of the churches have decided they're going to keep an electronic version going for that reason. Yes, continue to stream services for the infirm and frail so they can join in, but something else as well. So thinking about building Ecclesia, building the church, would any of us have earned the name Petros, Rocky? Hmm. So if our nickname aren't, isn't Petros in the church, what would yours be? Amen. Thank you, you all. And that's given us something to think about. Uh, what, what, would, what would our nickname be? What would Jesus um, call, call, call us? Um, brilliant, thank you. Um, we're going to continue our, our worship now uh, by affirming who we are in an affirmation of faith based on the 
um, Athanasian Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. So this is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. We believe and trust, trust in one God, God Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Now, um, Alan is going to lead us in our intercessions. Thank you, Alan. At the end of each prayer to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, will you please reply, hear our prayer. Lord God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. We come to you today to give you thanks and praise for your goodness and love for each one of us, contemplating the many mercies shown to us throughout our lives. We thank you for the marvels of your creation, the perfection of each and every living thing and being, and the perfect integration of all forms of life, one with another. Lord, please make us mindful and worthy of being stewards of your creation in our lifetimes. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come to you today with fear in our hearts, fear for the future of the world you have created, as we see the damage humankind is increasingly inflicting upon it. Lord God, give us help and instill in us all, especially in the hearts of those exercising power in this world, a change of attitude in respect of our greed, our selfishness, our thoughtfulness for your creation and for the well-being of all humankind, of plants and of animals alike. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Lord, we come to you today to seek for hope, as we see the effects COVID-19 is having on all aspects of, of human life in our modern world. Give us all hope in your, you, good Lord, as we contemplate the future of the human race, and especially the futures of our own families and friends. Lord God, our Father, please bring hope for a return to a more normal life to your people and bring comfort to those ill and dying from COVID and to all families and friends of victims of this terrible disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you today asking that you will be a shelter for all affected by unforeseen difficulties or disasters or tragic events. We bring before you those bereaved, injured or may hurt homeless by the explosion of chemicals in Beirut, the bereaved and injured in the train crash in Scotland, the two Dewsbury brothers who died at Lytham, the Californian wildfires, and the young people whose exam results were less than they were expecting and whose futures are still unresolved. Lord God our Father, in your great mercy, give support and shelter to the needy and those whose lives have been shattered by tragedy or by disappointment. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our prayer. prayer. Lord, we come to you today to pray for your church here and throughout the world. We pray for all Christians being persecuted, tortured and killed in China, Algeria, Egypt, Eritrea, India, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, 
Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Turkey, for following in the path of Peter, daring to proclaim Jesus as your Son and our Saviour, and for spreading the good news of your word. We pray for your church in our own country, that you will heal our divisions and make us one in spreading your word to an increasingly apathetic or hostile population. And we pray for your church here in Motherby, that we may soon be able to meet all together in our church buildings to again offer you our praises in music and singing. And we pray for the St. James Online Alpha Course, which is starting next month. Lord, shelter and strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we and all who confess your name may unite in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you today to pray for all who are sick, thinking particularly of David Holland, Shirley Robinson, Jean Kettlewell, Pauline Naylor, Sheila Guest, Nancy Smith of St. James Congregation, and for Alan Aspinall, a friend of our choir. Merciful Lord, we bring before you today for your healing touch all who are sick, and in silence we name these in our hearts and others known to us personally. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Now, Lord, we conclude our intercessions, praising you and rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Peter and all your saints. And, remembering Jess Higgins, we look to an eternal home with you in your kingdom. Merciful Father, we pray, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Alan. And as Alan prayed, and as you um, reminded us, as Christians, we're about change. Um, the change of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of God. So now we pray for that change and the change we long for in the words of the Lord's Christ. Longing for the refreshing of the earth, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king, the power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Right. Great. Well, um, um, news. Um, well, join us for coffee afterwards to find out some news. That would be wonderful if you want to catch up with uh, people. Um, we've spoken about the Alpha course, and, and you all mentioned that at this time, actually it's easier, or can be easier, although we miss meeting together, um, and we're working on how we can do that. It's actually easy to access church uh, if you're not used to coming. And, and actually the same is true with the Alpha Course. Uh, we'll miss meeting, I'll miss eating together. Uh, but actually it's going to be dead easy to join and to dip your toe in uh, and just to see see what it's like. So I do, I do commend that to you. And uh, please share that with your friends. It, it'd be lovely if, if many people can join us for that. 
Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today, uh, whether you're here in Weatherby or like you all a little bit further away. Um, thank you ever so much for joining us. Now, we're now going to um, pray for God's blessing. peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now to round off our service, the choir of St Martin Fields again to lead us in singing uh, all for Jesus. <laughs> 